saving our souls and bringing all here into the church house. We're thankful now, especially as we are every Sunday, the Lord's Day, to be remembered and keep it holy and so on. But now this is the day where, where even as a church and as a nation, we're going to, according to your commandments, it's a reflection of our Christian heritage, that, that we're going to honor our, the mothers. And it rightly so. You commanded it right in the Ten Commandments. So I pray as we make our attempts on it, humanly speaking, that you, your spirit would come along and do a work in, in the heart of every of every mother to know the blessing from God that it is to be called a mother. So as you, I pray you just bless the whole day of the worship service and just give us a word that will just encourage us and that we'll embrace the family, the marriage, and that role of a mother. God knows this country, uh, this country needs that. But now as we look at the word of God, I pray, uh, open up our understanding, help us to understand the scripture, help us to receive it as it is in truth, the word of God, and encourage us and all that here, uh, this, this study, to be blessed and encouraged and, and brought up a little stronger in the faith. I ask you to do this work by faith, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, in your guidebook, we're on page 92, we are in unit three now. Remember, uh, we're going through uh, the books of First and Second Timothy. Now we get to Titus. Historically, uh, Paul, God's man, writing to these young pastors, Timothy, who was in Ephesus for a while and, and called to, to lead that group. And then, uh, remember, last week we learned that, that, that Paul had asked him to come and sent somebody else in his place. I forget who that was. But now we're in the, in the book of Titus. Remember, and if you've read the, the, the lesson, Titus, God uh, used Paul to bring Titus to the island of Crete. Okay, so he's at an island, and, and, and you'll, if I don't, I better mention it right now. Apparently, that Paul, God's using Paul, and he's just not a lone ranger. There are other people involved in the ministry, in the evangelistic work, just like our church. We, got, we support missionaries. We've got a work going on over there in, in uh, West Africa and so on. So, so it hasn't stopped. When Jesus Christ saves some people, he calls people to serve him and glorify him. And one of the things that they do, they do evangelistic work. They share the gospel with others. So Paul was doing it. We're doing it. It's not going to stop until the day Jesus Christ ends it all. Okay. So, so Paul's working with Titus. And they, they must have got over there to the island of Crete and spread the gospel. And a lot of people got saved. There haven't been a lot of people that got saved because we're going to read where he's instructing Titus now to ordain leaders or elders among all the different groups. So 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 praise God, people got saved. How many of you are happy about that when someone gets saved? Say amen. amen. All right, good, good, good. But like we know, like in this church, Jesus didn't call just us to go and lead them to Jesus. He calls us to do what? To make them disciples. So they get saved, right? Then you got to do some discipling. Every church ought to have a ministry where you're bringing these young Christians along in the faith and making them disciples. What does the word mean? A devoted follower of Jesus Christ. That's what the word means. It's a biblical word, but it means a follower. And so when you and I got saved, you know what? How much did I know about the Bible? Oh, Genesis, Revelation, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, I didn't even know the names of the books. But, but much more than God's going to reveal himself by the word of the Lord. God's going to give us that instruction to make us a more godly man, a more godly woman, a better father, a better husband, a better mama, a better wife. He's going to, he's going to work in us to conform us to the image of who? Jesus Christ. He's going to work in our character so that we hate lying and we love telling the truth and we're going to love that which is good. And we're going to love preaching. I'll probably say that in the next few minutes. Okay? And so, so that's the work. So that's the historical context, but like we always say, let's take a look and see what God would have for us. So the, the title of this, there's going to be three lessons <coughs> through the book of Titus, and then we're going to go on to, to the next study. Okay, and this is, so unit three, it's, the title of unit three is Strengthen Your Church. Strengthen Your Church, and the first lesson is called Look for Qualified Spiritual Leaders. So this could be, hey, what if our kids go off to a distant state and they got to find a good church? What if maybe you're new to the area, you got to find a good church? Uh, you were raised in different religious systems, but wait a minute, wait a minute. And so you have different ideas. How about look at the Word of God and find out what God says about finding a godly church where you should go and your kids should go and your grandkids could. You ought to know that. You ought to know that. Because there are, there are church buildings spread across this country like gas stations. And, and most of them, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't stand in line behind any of the leaders there. Okay, so you better know this. You better know what God says about churches. How, how many of you know what a church is? And you would give me a quick definition. Uh, Lana? A body of uh, believers, plant, body, body of believers bodies together to uh, forward, the, forward the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
How like that? So it's, it's a group of people that, that are born again or saved or washed in the blood. It's a group of born again, Bible believing Christians that gather together. And for the common, common thing is their mutual faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? The one thing you left out is in a church, there are leaders. Thank you for doing that. I'll give you a couple of bucks later, okay? <laughs> That's what makes a church. In fact, I have in the bonus material sheet, right under, right underneath the title, today's lesson, look for qualified spiritual leaders. You ought, to, you ought to recognize that in your church. You ought, to, you, ought to, you ought to recognize that in a good biblical church. But the question then that the author of this uh, lesson is going to attempt to answer with God's help, how do my church's spiritual leaders help me grow in Christ? Okay, that's the question. But notice I put right underneath there, and because and, I thought this might come up, uh, th th that verse in Acts chapter 2, currently that's Acts chapter 2, verse 42, okay? Uh, she'll, she'll watch this later in Texas. The Bible says this, and they, those that gladly received the word and were baptized, you know, they're saved, okay? And they, born again, Bible-believing Christians like you and me, and they continued steadfastly in the, ap the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So, so what makes a church is leaders. A group of born-again, Bible-believing, washed-in-the-blood Christians where there's leaders, like it says, and, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. You catch that? There were leaders. And, and you see this throughout Timothy and Titus now, where what's going on? People got saved on the island of Crete. And what is God's man, Paul, ordained and called by God himself? And Paul is sending Titus over there to ordain what? Elders or bishops or uh, pastors, leaders. So, so you, you should know the difference. You can have a little Bible study in your home. It's not a church. It's a Bible study. A bunch of people got together, studied the Bible. But there's no pastor. There's no leader. Most, most times, well, I, I think the average Christian doesn't think about that. So that's why we're in Sunday school, to, be, to, to learn it. That, that you have a group of born-again, Bible-believing Christians that have that mutual faith in Jesus Christ and the Bible, but there are leaders. Just like it says in Acts chapter 1, and many of us know that you want to take a look at a biblical model of a church, look in the book of Acts. You're going to find it there. And the Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. I've been, just, just as a side now, this is bonus bonus, I've been to different Bible study groups, and I don't stay long. Because sooner or later I hear somebody saying something that just is not right. It's not biblical. Whew. So I would I would warn people that I love <laughs> that hey be careful. Go 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 study the Bible with some people, but be careful. It's not a church. There's no leader. There's no man of God called by God that's accountable to God that cares more about that book than probably you do. I would say go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I'd do that for a while before I get caught up in a in a one of these groups. You better be grounded in the faith because you might hear something from somebody that's not a man of God and you, you'll, get, you'll get sucker punched and you won't know that it's not true. That's kind of a little bit of warning from my experience. All right, so take a look at page, uh, uh, page 92 where we're talking about looking for qualified spiritual leaders. Qualified, we talked about that. Qualified, we're, we're going to look more at in the scripture. And spiritual leaders. Anybody can be a leader, but we're talking spiritual people, born again. Uh, loving God, loving that book, okay? They're spiritual people. And then leaders, I think around here, we like to use the term, don't we, Rod? We talk about leaders being servant leaders. And that's taken right from Scripture, where, where, where the apostles struggled <clears throat> to see who's going to be number one in Jesus. we got to go look it up. But Jesus said, hey, uh, he that's going to be greatest among you is going to be the least. He's going to be the servant will be the greatest. Okay, so you want, you want a, a, a leader, a pastor? That knows that he's called by God to serve the people of the church, not himself, for example. Okay, all right. So, so just but there's so much in the title there I, I, that I, you know, look, look at my, my pages. It's, it's filled with notes. I didn't even start reading yet. There's so much in the title. Anyway, so let's let's take a look. We only got three sections, so we ought to be able to get through it. Turn the page. We're going to start with uh, looking for qualified spiritual leaders. We're looking in the first four verses of Titus chapter one. Here's, here's what a leader's going to do. Number one, the title of that section, he's going to build up believers. So yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's all for evangelism. He's all for going out, sharing the gospel. He's all for leading people to Jesus Christ. Great, great, great. But he's about not only getting them saved, but getting them in the church house and bringing them along in the faith and growing them up in the faith. He's trying to build you and I up. And I, boy, Pastor Jim does that, does that for me. 
How many of you, Pastor, you say that about Pastor Jim? He builds you up in the faith a little bit. I think so. Yeah, good. Nod heads all over the paper. Okay. All right, so let's, let's read verses uh, <clears throat> 1 to 4 here. This is really an introduction, but it's just wonderful. This is really just a high hierarchy to Titus, but let's read. The Bible says in verse 1, Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the knowledge and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, my own son after the common faith, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. All right, so let's take a look at that. Paul, a servant of God. That's you and me. We're, he's the king. We're the servants. And, and he's doing all of this because he's a servant of God. God. And an apostle of Jesus Christ. Apostle, if you don't know, apostle means messenger sent out. And he is. He's a special messenger. And he's sent out by who? The Bible says he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. You might, you might find about different people, and even in the Bible, references to apostles. But then there, then there are these special group called the Apostles of Jesus Christ. There's like 12 of them. And you'll see that in, 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 in the book of Revelation. There's a difference between an apostle and then the Apostle of Jesus Christ. The Apostle of Jesus Christ sent out by God himself, Jesus Christ. So you'll see that all over in Scripture. And, and, and so, so this man, Paul, called by God and worked up in the faith and equipped by God and then called to this ministry to be an apostle, great. And he's an apostle for what? For sitting behind a desk and getting a check. Like it says. He, what he was all about, it says, he was according, according to the faith of God's elect. So the reason God made him an apostle, Kurt, was to, to lead people to faith in Jesus Christ and build them up in the faith. That's what he's all about. He's not, he's not making cars. He's not selling lift trucks ahead. He pays the bills, but that's not what he's all about. He's all about people bringing them to faith in Jesus and building them up in the faith. The faith of God's elect. Yes, ma'am. What's the difference between an apostle and a disciple? A disciple is a teacher, and an apostle is a messenger, you just said. Okay, what's the difference between an apostle and a disciple? Uh, I would say uh, a disciple is a follower. Okay. Now, now we in here, in this room, all those are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Raise your hand. Okay, because then, then there are the devil's disciples, and they probably have, there's probably biker they're, they're disciples, you know. So you're following wherever the head biker is. Okay, no, no, we're disciples of Jesus Christ. We're not just disciples. We're not following just anybody or anything. We're not following ourselves. We are disciples of Jesus Christ, and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. I'm a, that means I got saved, and now I'm following him. He's my Lord. He's my master. I'm a follower of Jesus. I, I made a mess of my life, and he is God, and he, everything he says is right and true, and I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow him. That's what a disciple is. How come some people say 12 disciples, and some people say 12 apostles? Because an apostle is a disciple as well. Because are, are, are the apostles followers? Yes, they are. But they're special followers. Now, we're not apostles of Jesus Christ. Okay, there were 12 of them. They're gone. There are no more. Okay? Because... Because Jesus Christ called these 12 guys to be apostles of Jesus Christ, to send the gospel, build the church, all that kind of stuff. And he's continuing his work, but they're gone. So there are no more apostles of Jesus Christ. So apostles were special disciples of Jesus Christ. So Jesus could call, Jesus can call them whatever he wants. <laughs> okay, and he called them disciples, the Bible does. He called, but the apostles means they're these special messengers sent by Jesus Christ. I don't, maybe Jesus. Judas, Judas, Judas started out as a disciple. He never became an apostle. So, so, so I mean, well said. So apostles of Jesus Christ, very specific, called by God. How many did he call for this 12 or whatever number? Because he, Paul became the replacement for it. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so there's only, so someone come around, you know, and start a TV show and, and say he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. That, that's annoying. 
In fact, the book of uh, Revelation uh, commands, God commands the churches that try those that say they are apostles and are not. I mean, like, like Paul, remember, he could get bit by a, a poisonous snake and not die. They, they could, you know, so, so you, you put a, someone who claims to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, put them to the scriptural test. They'll be dead or by, by, they'll be dead by sundown. Let, her, let, them, let, her, let her play. So, so I'm, I'm getting off the trail, but 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 you understand. All right. Yes, ma'am. I think to me, too, this is just a complete communication. It's like we talked about in Christ when we do fall. And that's praying with them or teaching them to be a follower of Christ, follower of Christ who's really a Christian, um, who are leading the church, for example, disciple a younger Christian. Yeah. But The disciple, the noun, is a follower of Jesus. The noun, right. discipling, the verb, right. is what exactly. disciples do. We train, like you had Paul and Timothy. And, yeah. Yeah. It, it can get confusing with the words. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Right. But that, that's what you ask the question. Well done, well done. You're not sure what a word means? Get a little clarification? Is, are you a little more, more clear? Okay, good. Well done, well done. Perfect, perfect example of what you ought to do in Sunday school. Ask a question, get a little clarification. And learn a little bit more of what these words mean. And I attempt to do that, but God knows I probably you know, don't do a good job. But so, so let, let's take a look at the back to the verses, okay? Uh, and so, so he's called uh, to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, and according to the faith of God's elect, lead people to faith in Jesus, build them up in the faith, and and the acknowledging of the truth, which is the Bible. Why would what's going to happen there? Which is after godliness. So that whole ministry of bringing people to lead a more godly life. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right, verse 2, in hope of eternal life. How many of you uh, think you're going to heaven? Raise your hand. Oh, so, so here's your, yeah, now you asked the question, Lois. So hope, hope is not wishful thinking. I hope I'm going to heaven. No, 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 no. We have a confident assurance that we're going to heaven. I think the author uses the phrase, a strong expectation. We know we have this hope of, of eternal life because it's confident assurance in who? Jesus Christ and in the word of God. We know we're going to I hope to go. I, I have hope of eternal life, but it's a strong expectation. It is confident assurance, and that's important because that's going to sustain you during this life down here when things get bad. All right. So, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie. Now, that's supposed to be a point of emphasis. I read the and the author there. I'm supposed to emphasize that that the the, uh, the thing about God's character that's very important to understand is God cannot lie. How many of you understand that? Raise your hand this morning. Okay, that's very important. So you probably hear your Sunday school teacher say that Jesus Christ, God Almighty, he's always going to tell you the truth. He's always, whatever he says is going to be right. You never have to worry about God ever, ever love, uh, lying to you. That's important. In fact, the definition of truth, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth. So you hear preachers talk about truth being the word of God, but it's also a person. It's Jesus Christ because everything he's going to say is going to be true. That's important. That makes me love him. That makes me want to follow him. So, so it talks about uh, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie uh, promised before the world began, but hath but hath but that hath in due times manifested His word. Manifested means to make His word known. So how does He do that? It says manifested His word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. So so again, uh, think about it just for a couple seconds. What do you love? I know you love your wives, yep, you love your mom, okay? But I mean, like, let's say I love I love tacos. You, you say you love tacos, you don't really love tacos. It means you really, really like it, you know. Uh, so what are some of the things you, you, you love, anybody? Jesus. Love Jesus, great, great, great. That's a good spiritual answer. Flowers. Okay, there you go, that's what I mean. I love flowers. Okay, there, I love flowers. I, some people would say I love the Packers, you know. Uh, what was that? Chocolate, okay, I love chocolate. It means you don't really, well, well there we were, were getting into that. We were getting into that love. <laughs> but here's the idea, here's the idea. I think I think uh, a Christian that loves Jesus Christ and, 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 and loves the Bible and all that, you know what you do? You love preaching. I, I say that, I love preaching. I, I, I probably have, I bet you I have CDs. Yeah, I bet you have, I got CDs, Papa Sam, Kathy, uh, Jerry Chaddock, maybe Pastor Jim. You know, you love preaching. I love preaching. I love different kinds of preachers. Uh, Tony Evans, anybody ever hear him on the radio? You're driving along, right? And you've got Christian radio on, and Tony Evans comes on. Oh, man. And he's, he's just, everybody, every, every preacher's got a different personality, different way. But I love preaching. If you don't love preaching, 
Hmm. No, you probably should love preaching because God said that that he, he chose to, to manifest his word through preaching, through the foolishness of preaching. I have it in the bonus material to you, okay? But now notice, uh, it's, he's saying that, that, that uh, the preaching of God's word, Paul is saying, is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. So I, I saw two things here. Num number one, you notice that he went around preaching the word, and he is saying that he did it by authority. Of God. Understand that. And we understand, you know, uh, God ordaining Pastor Jim, calling Pastor Jim to be a pastor. He's up there preaching the word, and he'll he'll tell you, he's doing uh, by what authority are you preaching and saying this stuff? By the authority of God Almighty. Understood. But here's here's where I'm going with this. When God calls us to do things, say like pass out tracts, share the gospel. Tell others about Jesus Christ. And maybe you're a little bit nervous about it. I want to remind you and myself that we are doing that under God's authority. Did, did God not tell us, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Yes, he did. Did he not say, as my Father has sent me, so now I send so realize when you see, you know, that when we talk about bikers, you know, maybe a little intimidating or other people, uh, maybe these little grand ladies that maybe they're intimidating, whatever. Realize, and this will help you be a soul winner, when you realize, Kurt, that you're doing this under the authority of Almighty God. Yes, we are. Okay. And then secondly, uh, like the author brought out in here, especially that last verse. Now, Titus is on the island of Crete, right? And he's got, he's got people problems. You know why? Because he's got people. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Where there are people, there are going to be problems. Just ask any pastor on the planet. Everybody's down their head, bro. Okay? So so, so he, he's got issues, and that's why uh, God's using uh, Paul to write to Titus to encourage him in the faith. And then look, look at the endearing terms here, he says, in, in verse 4. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith. Uh, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ again. That idea of Titus, you call uh, to serve there on that island, and so on, under the authority of God the Father, and under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, you have eternal life. Remember, God's commanded you and commanded me, and we're doing this under the authority of God, which is encouraging for a young pastor, young preacher, to know when times and people get difficult. All right, so so that, that's what they do. Though. They 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 build they build you up in the faith. I have some other uh, uh, message uh, verses under number one on the bonus material sheet. You see them there. Uh, but many of that's many like number number C. Uh, God He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So again, again, a, a church with leaders. God ordains it. Uh, that way, so that God can build us up in the faith. That's what a pastor's job is to do. Lynn. So we can't think that they, they're infallible. They're going to make mistakes every minute. And a lot of the times when someone says something that you may know is incorrect and that you, you misspoke, because you, you can't hold them to the same level that you can God or Jesus. You know, every man, oh, you know, a woman that works in the ministry. Still human. Everybody hear that? Uh, yeah, they're they're not sinless. No. Uh, in fact, the pastor does a marvelous job of being. I think they, the word they used is transparent. Uh, he he is he is honest with anyone that serves with him that he struggles just like we do. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. He struggles the same way we do. So 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 just like in any role. Uh, let's say in God, the Bible is filled with roles, correct? Hey, if you're a father, Ed, has God called us to fulfill that role? Yes. But but are, 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 do we sin once in a while? Just ask just ask our wives. Yes, we do. Okay. There's there's two different subjects there. One is God puts you in a role. Uh, ladies, mothers, you're in that role with all the instructions and the things God instructs you to, to obey. So we're all placed in these roles by God. So we all su submit and surrender and obey the Lord because we love him 
and we're aware of people being in these different roles. Just because I'm a father doesn't mean I'm sinless. No, nope. ask my family uh, or, or the mothers here. That had any mother here want to raise their hand and say they haven't, they haven't sinned this week? No. Okay, so the pastor's no different. Uh, he's in that role, put there by God, to preach the word and so on. But, but yeah. we know. Well, that's been baked into the wrong scripture for me. And it'll be okay. Can you just end it? You know, You know where I go with that comment is that's why you need to pray for your dad. Okay. Or you Did you hear pray, that, Curly? You need to pray for your mom. Okay. Or, or now even more so, imagine, imagine as we, we my, my my plate's pretty full. I get overwhelmed when I hear about my responsibility as a husband, as a father. Guess what? A pastor is a husband. He is a father. But now, lay, what God lays upon his shoulders are the burdens of all the church. That's why we ought to pray for him. Mm-hmm. All right, good. Good, good comment. All right, so then the, sec- the second set of scripture, page 96 in the guidebook, uh, Titus chapter 1, look in verse uh, 5 to 9. The title of the section is Guard Your Character. So again, to recognize, uh, uh, you know, the, the leaders, spiritual leaders, uh, they, they need to be uh, Christian men of character. That's the point. Okay, let's take a look. It says in verse 5, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that's the island of Crete, uh, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. He had work to do, uh, and so on, and, and, and ordain elders in every city. So ordaining, appointing, uh, but ordaining has to do probably with, it's generally like some solemn reference to God choosing or appointing. So ordaining elders in every city as I appointed thee. Uh, verse 6, If any, now now here, here are the uh, qualities of, or the characteristics of this of this leader, okay? Uh, and and some of, there's a group of them that are negative, not like this, not like that, okay? And then some are positive, okay? Let, let's recognize them. It says in verse in verse six, talking about elders, talking about spiritual leaders. It says, if any be blameless. Now we talked about that. Blameless does not mean sinless. It means blameless, like uh, they're living their lives. Pastor Jim probably sins once in a while, like we all do, okay? But he's, he's repenting and getting right with God. Uh, uh, and, but but if, if a person is in a pattern of sin, they're a spiritual leader, but they have a, they have a weeks, months worth of, of pornographic, okay, or, or, they, or they, they got a gambling problem, or, you know, fill it in, fill in the blank, where there's, a, there's this repetitive behavior in their life, now, it's, now that they are to be blamed. Because the pattern of their life has some sin, uh, sin problem. Okay, uh, so, so and I, I think of I think it's in Luke chapter one. It talks about Zacharias, Zacharias and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist, right? And he's he's taken he's he's in the middle of doing his office as a, 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 a in the temple and so on. And, and there's a phrase in there. You, they were they were righteous before God, and they were walking in all the ordinances and the commandments and so on of, of the Jewish religion, blameless. So there's a good scriptural reference for what that means. Uh, so, but I think we all got it. We all got it, Rod. good to understand. We're going to see three terms here. One is elders, another is bishop, and then there's a third one. I don't I don't think we see it in Titus here, but it's pastor. And Pastor Jim has preached on this. That can be the same person. The elder referring to a maturity uh, again, and, and there, you'll see in a second, they're measured by how they rule their home. So, so the married children, uh, uh, the bishop or overseer, uh, the, 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 the emphasis on ruling and the scriptural the scripture that refers to them, uh, they that have the, uh, obey them that have the rule over you, you know, the reference to that role of bishop, and then pastor more of a shepherd, 
A lot of times when you see the word pastor, you see it in the context of, of taking care of the sheep. So, so that caregiver. So you'll see those three words used sometimes simultaneously, sometimes in the same group of scripture. Uh, so when you see that, that could be, that could be one person. Okay? But, but God uses those different words. It's a great word. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, so, let, so it says uh, the characteristics of a spiritual leader, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife. There you go. Rod's talking about, and not, not only is he married, but, but the idea that he's devoted husband, faithful husband. The idea, and there's another scripture where that, that if he can't be faithful and devoted to his wife, how is he supposed to be devoted and faithful to God in the care of the church? Okay. So you can build, that, build on that thought a little bit. Uh, the husband of one wife having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. Again, the, the idea that a, a godly leader in the home, that, that even uh, the children uh, respect and reverence, you know, uh, so he's guiding He's guiding well his own house. And I think, I think uh, what is it, uh, Timothy, somewhere where if he, if he, the Bible literally comes out and says if he can't care for his own family, how, can he, how shall he take care of the church of God? So, so, so uh, that, that's on the positive. Uh, it says in verse 7, for a bishop, th there you go, we heard, we heard elder, and we're talking about that role. But, but in the very next verse, it says, for a bishop, is he changing the subject? No, the bishop or overseer has to do with ruling or administration. Okay, and there's a lot of verses related to them that have the rule over you, you know, and so on. Okay, for a bishop must be blameless, there you go, there it is again, as the steward of God, not self-willed, not, not proud and selfish, it's all got to be his way. See, because he's being called by God to take, he, he, it's not his church, it's God's church, he's just called to be the steward or the manager over God's church, he gives account to God. Okay? It's good to understand how God expects his church to be run and the responsibilities of a, of a, of a leader, only only like was brought out. You know, it, it's going to be like like you know, we're Christian. You know, the lost people they know they know the standard by which we you know so, so they're, they're really good at that, but they're lost. <laughs> okay, so we as Christians got to be careful that we don't we don't get expert on what a good pastor should be, so that we're always condemning and looking at the flaws and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. I I would rather be. Let me put it uh, put it in terms of street language. I would suggest that you get so busy. Rolling the boat for Jesus, that you don't have time to rock it by always holding that pastor accountable every little thing that they do. Follow me? I've been in churches where, and they, they have this pastor committee. You know, be careful. So, so while while in one sense, you know, uh, he's a servant of God, and and God is the authority in His Word, but but on, in a bad sense, you got to be careful that you're not always in judgment, condemning. You know, be careful. All right, so, so, so there's different aspects of that. Okay, verse verse 7. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God. There you go. Not self-willed, not soon angry. No, not soon angry. Oh, he got angry. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. There is no righteous anger. Okay, okay. But it says not soon angry. Okay, he doesn't have a short wit. Okay, all right. Uh, and then not given to wine. Okay, so he's not a drunk. And, and, that, and, that, and that wine, beer, hooch, wine, you, you name it. Alcohol, champagne, all of that's in there. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, not given to wine, no striker. Okay, you know he's not you know, uh, foot to foot, fist to fist. Not given to filthy lucre. That's a biblical word for money and all that. Now, he's not in it for the money. Okay, now well, that never happens. <laughs> right, anybody watch TV? Okay, okay, all right. So anyway, anyway so not. Uh, but now here, here are the good. Those are the negatives. But now in verse eight, but a lover of hospitality. A lover of good men, sober or serious, uh, just holy. Holy means set apart and, and pure, righteous, a righteous uh, uh, lifestyle, like, like we've mentioned. Temperate. And then verse 9, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught. So he's all about the word. Even when the, the, the office of deacon came up in Acts chapter 6, remember the, 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 the ladies that they, they had to meet in some ministration? They, they said, hey, pick out you some, some men of, of godly character and everything to look over this matter. But I think I have it in my bonus material sheet there. But we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word, the Bible says. So he's all about the word. He's all about preaching the word. He loves that book. Okay. All right. Uh, like it says, as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort, encourage, build up, you know, a positive way, and convince the gainsayers. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, address those that are, uh, are resistant to the gospel or resistant to truth. It's all over the place. And I think of gainsayers, you know, that warning, uh, 
And they that think they that think gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. So there's that whole pattern. If you look up uh, supposing gain is godliness, you'll see a whole pattern of behavior. That's who the pastors, Titus, others have to deal with, those that resist good, sound preaching. All right, so 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 they guard their character. You're looking for a spiritual leader, men of character. You know what I'd suggest to you? That especially you young guys, you know, you could strive that I want to be that kind of a person. I want to have that kind of a character. That'd be well, that'd be, that'd be good. I know when I first heard about it, I, and I'm a young guy saved two, three years, I thought, well, you know, I, I'm not saying I'm going to be a pastor or anything, but if that's the standard that God has for a man of God, I want to be a man of God. I want to be of that character. And I, I, I purposed in my heart, I'm going to try to live that way. Why not? That'd be good. That'd be good. All right. All right. So you can, you know, tell the kids, tell the young men. All right. So then lastly, and we're done, page 98. Uh, a, good, a good pastor, a good leader, is going to be about correcting false teachings. Doesn't that sound good? How many of you like that? I mean, I, there's so much lies in the world. I want to come to some place, uh, some place on planet, planet Earth, where I can hear the truth, how things really are, according to God Almighty. That's why I love coming here. Ain't it wonderful? Ain't it wonderful? But <coughs> here's, here's the other side. Once in a while, you're going to get hit. <laughs> Once in a while, it's going to rub you the wrong way. Once in a while, it's you that are going to get corrected. So what are you going to do? I'm man of character. I never thought that. <laughs> no, no. That's why it's good to know this now while you don't have anything against him. Because the day is going to come where he's going to say something that kind of rubs you the wrong way. And it's not him. He's just the paper boy bringing the message from God. It's all about God. God just put the man to be a father. God just put the man to be a pastor. He's preaching the word, and it rubs you the wrong way because you've got a problem not with him. You have a problem with God. <laughs> Mark it down. Write it on your arm. <laughs> put it on the fridge so that when you hear something that it very well may be, it has been always in my life, that I'm, I have a problem with God. Just like when the kids... When the kids got, a, you're just you're telling them what's right and wrong, and, and they got a problem with you. You that's what you see, but that they really have a problem with God and who's in that a role that's above them in the Lord, right? They're rebellious toward you. That's what we see, but they're really rebellious toward God. Use that to try to correct them. All right. So so lastly, correct false teachings. Let's read. It says, uh, so why 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 is this man of God supposed to be this godly character? Okay, uh, to please God and so on and be an example. So he's preaching the word, but but he's also to be an example that we can follow, okay? We realize he's human. Thank you. Thank you, because there's hope for me then, okay? But And then he's going to hold fast, sound doctrine, and, and the word of God. Why is that? Verse 10, the Bible says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Did you catch that? There are many. <laughs> there were on the island of Crete, and there, there are today all over the place. Okay, for there are many unruly. They won't listen to any authority because they're self-willed and so on. It's got to be their way and so on. No, I, my heart goes out to you, Pastor. Wow, it's hard enough being a dad. Okay, so you know what I mean. All right, so it says, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Deceivers, lies. How are you going to counteract that with the truth? What God really said? How things really are? All right? Especially day of the circumcision, which is that reference, like like I think you said, uh, uh, Rob, you know, the, the reference to elder taken from the Jewish religion and so on. So he said, hey, you know what the, what they had the biggest problem with? Especially they of the circumcision. That's a reference to, to, to those that were in Judaism. And, and why do we care about that? Because Judaism, that's that Jewish Old Testament law kind of thing. You know, well, that doesn't apply to us. Yes, it does. Here's how there are religious systems. I think one in northeastern Wisconsin, not down in Dallas there, I know, but, but in northeastern, what, what, the Roman Catholic religious system that you and I get saved out of, and we got all this stuff, all this baggage, you know? Like, and so then what they were trying to do, here's what's going on. They get saved, and now they're gathering together, and, and Paul is telling Titus to, to ordain elders to, to get things in line and order, which is all about what the Bible says and what Scripture says and so on. you got these saved Ju Judaizers coming in thinking that we got to follow some of the Jewish law. Wrong. No, no, you have to deal with that. It'd be like if I got saved, I come into church, it's like, but I really like Lent. <laughs> and so I want to, why don't we have Lent? <laughs> and then I start whispering, and a couple other lost Catholics got saved. Yeah, we really love Lent. Well, let's have Lent, you know. We want to stir up Lent, and we got a Lent committee now. Now Pastor's going <laughs> to shut that sucker right down, because that's not scriptural. 
You're not doing that, Lance. Stop. That ain't right. That's just an example. You see what I mean? So, so that's pastors deal with this stuff all the time. All right. So, so it says in verse, and now it's serious. In verse 11, uh, it says, whose mouths must be stopped? Why? Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Okay. So subverting. And I have that in the bonus material. The definition of it means to corrupt, to confound, to pervert the mind, to turn it away from the truth. So it's serious. That's why a pastor that just puts up with, you know, this Lent, this Lenten stuff, man, no, that's got to be dealt with. Because you'll corrupt people and they won't believe the truth and it'll be a lot, it'll, it'll not be good. So it's serious. Verse 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the, the Cretans, yeah, the people on the island of Crete, the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and slow bellies. I think slow bellies, help me, Rob, does that mean they're lazy? La lazy gluttons? Okay, okay. So, so uh, well, you know, some people, you know, they got a reputation. All right, so, all right, let's move on. Verse, verse, uh, verse 13. This witness is true, the Bible says. Yeah, that's the way they are. Wherefore, now give them that. Given that you've got all these people bringing in the baggage, given that even though they're self, they can be self-willed, even, even though they're saved, maybe in the church, you know, they're going to be lazy outfits, you know, and, and you got to, pastors got to meet us, meet us where we're at, bring us along in the faith. And so given all of that, the Bible says, wherefore, rebuke them sharply. Well, you know, you just got to put up with it. I let them have fun with that Latin thing. I ain't, I ain't hurting anybody. No, no. No. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. Why? That they may be sound in the faith. Not necessarily trying to, you know, have fights and arguments and all that kind of stuff, but lovingly bring them the, the, the sound doctrine and lovingly say, this is wrong, this is not scriptural. It sounds nice, but there's no scriptural basis for this. You just guys got to let that go. So why? Because he's trying to build you up in the faith so that what you believe is right and it's sound doctrine. Hallelujah for, for pastors like that. Okay? All right, so that's what you're looking for. Uh, in verse 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. I think of that uh, warning in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. I have it in there. The Bible says, beware. Let me see beware in the scripture. Hello. Turn off the television. I got to read that. You know, beware a dog. I used to be a paper boy. You see? So I see beware. Oh, man. Okay. So, so it says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. A Christian ought to examine all these traditions. Well, we have a tradition of honoring our mother. Great. Scriptural. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Great, great. Some traditions are, are awesome, but then some are not. Check them out. Okay, so it says in verse 15 there, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. But in works they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and under every good work reprobate. So, so you know, they say they're Christian, you gotta watch how they live. You gotta yeah, that's why I mean I don't know how you come to church and just join the church after one service. You gotta come and kind of get to know the spirit of the, of the place, get to know the pastor, which a lot of you did, and a lot of people do, and, and, and you watch that pastor, you learn from him, and make sure it's biblical. Make sure that they are that they are building building up believers. That uh, and I have on the very end of, of good leaders of our bonus material sheet two things. Uh, a good pastor will do like it says in Acts twenty. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Some pastors they won't preach on certain subjects because they know some rich businessman that puts a lot of money in the plate. He loves his wine once in a while, so they won't preach on alcohol. They're compromising because they, they're afraid the person will leave. Not our pastor. He will pray. He will preach the whole counsel of God. Or maybe nowadays in our culture, this whole gay, gay marriage thing, which is not gay marriage, it's an oxymoron, it's sexual perversion. But I give credit to any man of God that will get up and just preach the word as God leads him. You have to preach that man, and you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to get all kinds of trouble for doing that. But, but a godly leader will, will, will not shun to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. That's why we got to pray for him. All right. And then secondly, so that's the first thing, a godly preacher will preach the whole counsel of God. There will be no subject, and I'm talking about Pastor Jim, <laughs> there's no subject, no scripture that he will not preach on because he, he wants to be faithful to God. That's the kind of man of God you want to be under right there, okay, all right, because his heart's right. And then lastly, know this, know this, it says in John chapter 6, 
Verse 66 to 68. Jesus Christ preaching, 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 preaching. And it says, and from that time many of his disciples went back. Somebody brought this up. They'll leave. And from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Yeah, when the preaching got hard, when they got hit, they stopped following. And then it says, then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye go away? Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, praise God for him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So good preaching, if you're in a church where there's good preaching, people are going to come and go. Mark it down. You think of that, that parable of the seed, the sower, and everything? Some of it falling on, on the pathway and the stony ground. The Bible says that. And then, and then one out of the four, it's in the good ground, holy ground. Okay? And so, so when they hear good preaching, some people are going to leave. And the Bible says they went out from among us because they were not of us. Okay, so, so you know, if, you're, if you think a good church is one that's always growing in numbers, man, no way. No way. Keep preaching the book. Uh, it should grow because it's healthy. Healthy things grow. Pastor knows that. He wants this church to be healthy. Let's help the things grow. Let's close in a word of prayer. Thank you for listening. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the word of God, for the instruction of what to look for in leaders within the church. I pray you'd help us to remember this and be grateful for the leadership that we have in this church. I pray it by faith now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bye.